Well, hi everyone. I'm here at Ararat Ridge Zoo, which is behind the Ark at the Ark Encounter attraction. And we have all sorts of animals here. Actually, a unique zoo because you can sort of be up close to the animals. It's different to a lot of zoos. And we want to talk about two new exhibits that have just opened with some interesting creatures in them. Leanne, who's our senior zoo manager here, looks after the staff, looks after the zoo here and the animals up at the Creation Museum as well. Yes. And so, Leanne, we have a very unique creature in here, one of the creatures God created, yes. right? Yes. And, okay, what's its official name? So uh, her official name is a binturong, uh, more specifically a Palawan binturong, but they are also referred to as bear cats. So a lot of people don't necessarily know what a binturong is, but a lot of people know what a bear cat is. Now, why would you call it a bear cat when it's not a bear and it's not a cat? <laughs> so they get this, um, this name bear cat um, because they kind of look like a cross between a bear and a cat, which of course we know um, is not a thing because bears and cats are members of two distinct created kinds. Um, Ricky here is a member of the civet created kind. So bear cats, civets, gennets, these guys are all members of the same created kind. There's actually 35 different species within this created kind. And there are nine species of bear cat. Now, as I said, Ricky is a Palawan binturong. So her species is actually only found in the Palawan Islands of the Philippines. So they've got a very small um, natural range. And um, to our knowledge, there's only about 25 um, Palawan binturongs here in zoos in the United States. So it's pretty rare then. Is it yes. considered an endangered species? Um, so bear cats are not considered endangered. Their populations are considered vulnerable. Um, so these guys do live in rainforest. Um, so sometimes um, with deforestation, um, rainforest being cut down, that is um, kind of reduces their range. Um, also, these guys, as you can see, are really, really cool animals. So unfortunately, these guys um, are often um, um, trafficked um, as exotic pets. So that's another reason that their numbers are falling um, in the wild. Um, thankfully, these guys do really well um, in a zoo setting though. Um, they tend to um, breed and reproduce really well. So we do have um, uh, quite a few binturongs um, in zoos. As I said, there's less Palauan binturongs um, in zoos than um, some of the other species of binturong, but their numbers are growing in zoos. Now, one of your staff there has been uh, feeding, yes. <laughs> feeding this binturong uh, so that we can see her a little close up. Yeah. And uh, what, sh what is she feeding her? Um, so Ricky here, some of her favorite snacks are tomatoes and bananas. Um, so these guys um, are considered, they're in the order, uh, car they're in the carnivora order, but these guys are um, omnivores and frugivores. So Ricky here, um, her main diet um, in her natural range is going to be fruits. So here in the zoo, um, we mimic that diet. So she gets a variety of different fruits, but then she also gets vegetables as well. Um, um, now she is technically an omnivore, so she gets some egg um, twice a week, but she is mainly um, she is mainly um, going to be um, a f uh, herbivore. Which so is funny. of course, originally before the fall, they were all herbivores. Yes. All plant eaters. Yes, they were plant eaters. So Ricky here does have some really big canine teeth. So if she opens her mouth, you might think, oh my goodness, she definitely is going to be a meat eater. But believe it or not, she is a plant eater. So sometimes they use those nice sharp teeth for getting into different fruits um, and other things as well. So sharp teeth don't necessarily mean that they eat meat, which you is... Know, you know, I've um, actually been down here a few times since you've uh, actually put this binturong in here and what was her name again what are you calling her ricky ricky since you put ricky in here uh, but i have i didn't realize she was so big you know because yes. she's curled up there i've seen her mm -hmm. sleeping up there are, are they nocturnal um, these guys are nocturnal, um, so they uh, they spend most of their day sleeping. Um, now, Ricky will um, she will get active if we um, have 
um, some food out right now. So you can see tomatoes, um, bananas. They are definitely some of her favorite foods. Um, so she will get active if there's food out, but mostly during the day she's going to be kind of snoozing, napping around. Um, she does like climbing around and exploring her habitat though. So I you may see her active usually early in the mornings like this. So if you come down to the zoo um, around nine o'clock, um, you might see her out a little bit more active. And then again in the evening, um, since we're open till eight o'clock now for the summer, um, you may see her um, get active a little bit more in the evening well, as well. It's fascinating to watch. I, I've i never seen one before and I've only ever seen her asleep, as I said, since uh, she's been here. <laughs> and I didn't realize she was so big and yes. fascinating So um, the females um, in this, um, Binturongs, Bearcats, the females typically are quite a bit bigger than the males. Um, so she right now is about 20 pounds. Um, these guys, females can be anywhere typically from 30 to 50 pounds um, when they're fully grown. Now the Palawan Binturong is known for being a little bit smaller. So she probably won't hit 50 pounds, um, but these guys are uh, quite big animals. They can be three feet long. Um, and another cool fact, if you notice her beautiful tail here that she's kind of using as she's climbing around is that bear cats do have fully prehensile tails. So they can actually, um, almost they can hang by their tails and there's wow. only two, um, two mammals in the order of carnivora that can do that which are the bear cats and the kinkachus. Um, so bear cats are the only what we consider old world animals that can actually, um, that actually have a fully prehensile tail that can hang by the tail. Now, uh, she's a mammal, mm -hmm. not a marsupial. Not a marsupial. Okay, <laughs> not an egg laying mammal. <laughs> she's, she's a mammal and she's all alone. Yes. <laughs> I've, I've had people on my Facebook say, are you gonna get her a mate? She's all alone. Do they like being alone? So binturongs um, in their native ranges are going to be solitary um, or they will live in different family groups, um, usually a male and a female and maybe their cubs. Um, Ricky here, she's only two years old. Um, so these guys typically reach uh, maturity around four years old. Um, so Ricky here is not fully mature. So um, we would not at this point want to put a male um, with her just because she's not quite old enough to have cubs yet. Um, and also because these guys are, there's only about 25 of them in the country right now, um, finding her um, a companion or a mate, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging since she is a Palau and Mintrong. Um, but we are definitely looking um, towards the future, uh, maybe having different opportunities, maybe to work with another facility um, to possibly have some little Binturong um, cubs once Ricky, you know, reaches reaches adulthood. But these guys are perfectly happy and content um, living by themselves. They definitely do not need a companion. Um, you can see she seems, she's perfectly content in this habitat. Um, she definitely likes her space. So I don't know how much, how willing she'd be <laughs> to share at this point with, with another Binturong. And I know up in that corner, that's her favorite spot. That's where she likes to yes. sit. Probably, <laughs> probably cause it's what the darkest area. Um, dark because it's got a little bit of cover. Um, and that's just kind of where she decided she wanted to, um, that's where she goes. Every that's time, her corner. Yep. Uh, that corner where she is now, every time I come down here, I've seen her just Sitting there is yep, there she goes. sleeping, moving around now. That's it. That's her favorite. That's place her favorite right quarter. There. So we gave her a bunch of different um, perchings like around um, the habitat out here just to try to give her some nice places where um, she would feel comfortable. But she has decided this little branch here is definitely um, the most comfortable spot. So this is where you'll see her. Sometimes she's got her head smooshed against the wall and other times like that or sometimes she's turned around with her tail. Usually she'll kind of loop her tail around the branch there to help kind of steady herself and support herself. <laughs> there she goes. <laughs> she's a silly girl. Um, but yeah, this is her favorite spot. So if you come down to the zoo and she is out on habitat, this that's, is probably where you're going it. to that's find her. That's it, that's how I've yep. seen her every time I've been down there, just like that. <laughs> she's ready to go back to sleep now, I had a little fun. She's like, I, she's like, okay, I've done enough climbing this morning. I'm, I'm good to go. <laughs> okay, well let's, uh, let's get our cameraman to follow us here and uh, we will actually uh, go to another brand new exhibit with yes. some fascinating creatures. Yes. We'll come through here. So when the Binturong is not out on exhibit, mm -hmm. you can actually look into the glass in here and, yes. and uh, see her in there. Yeah, yeah. And, so, uh, yep, that is her um, indoor And exhibit. this is another indoor area yep. for we these have. critters that are out here. Yes. Oh, we can actually. Yeah, there's two in here. <laughs> we see. If we can see two in there. Let me see if uh, I can uh, put some. 
Yes. So um, here's um, the other animals in this building. So these are our African crested porcupines. Um, and we actually have four African crested porcupines. So these boys, I um, believe this is our young boys. These are our two year olds. This is Thomas and Caleb. They were actually born here at Ararat Ridge Zoo. So we're going to go outside um, here soon and see their mom and dad, Gideon and Atara. But these guys um, were born here um, almost two years ago, two years ago this month. Um, and uh, they were actually hand raised by a couple of keepers here at the zoo because these are these guys are part of our um, ambassador animal collection. So not only do you get to see them on exhibit, but you may actually get to see them on the show stage at the animal actor. Oh, OK. Building. We might end up just walking around to the yeah. show stage here. But let's go out here. So this is where people can see them outside. Yes. And so this is the mum and dad, right? This is this is mom and dad. Baby. Oh, baby. Sorry. <laughs> Just kidding. We saw Gideon and Atara inside, and this is Thomas and Caleb out here. Oh, okay. You had it the wrong way around. <laughs> I did. Okay. Shelley is the so the parents whisperer. are inside. These are the, the yes. kids. These okay. are the kids out here. Um, so nice part is, um, unless these guys are at shows, um, we should have porcupines out in their outdoor habitat as well as inside. So you get to see four, uh, uh, four African crested porcupines when you come down here to the zoo. So they're getting some fun and enrichment. So Shelly um, is their primary keeper. She's coming around now to join us. Um, but she, this is part of their welcome home party. So um, this exhibit, we've been looking forward to getting these guys out on Habitat so guests can see them and enjoy them as much as we do. So we're very, very excited to have these guys out. So that looks like uh, one of those things they hang up in Mexico, isn't it? Then you bang them and... Yes. <laughs> What do you call those? Piñatas. Oh, yeah, piñata. Yes. Yes. You mean you have porcupine piñatas? Well, the porcupines have piñatas today, yes. <laughs> so what's inside there for them? So that's part of their... That is part of their morning diet. So sweet potato, jicama, um, some lettuce, romaine lettuce, and probably some beet. Maybe a little fruit treat because i got to spoil them. <laughs> and so, Leanne... Uh, how old did you say they were? So these two are turning two years old this month. Um, so Shelly here, um, she was um, one of their moms. Um, so we decided to hand raise these guys um, so we could use them in, as ambassador animals in shows and hopefully eventually we'll be able to take them out on walks around the zoo. We're working on that right now. Um, so we actually, we left them with Gideon and Atara for about a week. Um, and then we pulled, we pulled the babies and we basically had a calendar for porcupine raising. So we kind of alternated who took these guys home. So they've been in my house, they've been in Shelly's house, um, when they were little porc uh, porcupines. So baby porcupines are called porcupines, which is the cutest so, thing so ever. So Shelly, I want to ask you a question. Yes. Because people ask this. Look at those quills I have there. Are we likely to get struck by one? Do they shoot their quills? You know how there's this, you know, idea people have that they'll shoot their quills out mm. and we could get speared or something? That is a complete myth. So they cannot shoot them. They do shed them naturally. They're just um, a, a, a type of hair. It's made out of keratin, just like our hair and our fingernails. However, they do use them for defense. Um, the way they do that, if they're alerted to something, they will flare those up, much like you might see a peacock raise uh, their feathers, and then they will stomp to warn you away. Um, they've got some uh, tail quills there that are hollow, and they can rattle those, mimicking uh, a, like a rattlesnake. And if you still don't leave uh, these guys alone, they will basically ram you backwards. Um, they also swing their hips kind of back and forth to uh, protect themselves as well. Oh, okay, so that's a myth. So people can walk around here and not worry about getting speared <laughs> by a quill. They don't shoot their quills. As long as they don't upset them, uh, they will not get harmed, but you're correct, they cannot shoot those quills. Well, that's good. I'm glad we got rid of that particular uh, <laughs> myth. And so uh, these are, African crest and now are there many of those in zoos? Yeah they're used a lot for ambassador animals so shows and um, things like that um, just kind of specialty programs I feel like we're a little bit different because ours are on exhibit and they're used for shows so um, like Leanne was describing we started taking them home and working with them very early on so I use that time to get them on a harness and a lead so they go out on the stage here for shows during uh, the day and they walk on their harness and lead. And like Leanne said, we're hoping to hone that in a little bit more and get them out and about in the zoo a little bit. So you actually had these in your house? Yes. 
like pets. Yes. <laughs> yes. But they weren't. They're sort of pets, but they're not really pets. Correct. I would not recommend getting these as pets. Um, if you look in their exhibit here, they are borrowers, meaning they love to dig. So that is a trait of old world porcupines. So they will, they're nocturnal, so they're going to keep you up at night. Um, and they chew. They're rodents, much like your um, guinea pigs and hamsters, stuff like that. So they will chew on anything they can. So basically they'd rip up the furniture, rip out the walls, rip out the doors. Correct. <laughs> so, so how did you keep them from doing that? Well, luckily they were basically under a pound, so uh, they were a little bit manageable and we did keep them basically in a dog kennel. So um, kept them safe from my furniture. So they're used to people. Very much. So what about the mum and dad? Are they as used to people? They are. So uh, Gideon, the male, he was hand raised as well at another facility. He came to us, I believe, at about six months old. Atara, she's getting there. She was not hand raised and she came to us a little bit older. Uh, so I try to work with her, just kind of sit in and socialize with her as much as possible. So she doesn't go after me. Well, that's good. Well, great. Well, Leanne, let's just walk around here for a yeah. moment. Uh, this is a beautiful exhibit that mm -hmm. Our construction team we have here mm -hmm. at the Ark Encounter, they build all these exhibits. We, we do all that yes. ourselves with our own talented staff and even all this intricate stamping they did here on the concrete uh, makes it look like nice yes. stone. Yeah, when uh, we were when we were thinking, when we were designing this exhibit, um, I said I really kind of wanted to have this rock, like rock kind of just making it look as natural as possible. So this is the idea that our uh, site development crew came up with and I love it. So. We have just opened this area, so there's more plants to go in here yet. I know they're going to bring a lot more plants in. And I think it's this area here. What are we going to build here? So what we're going to have here is um, a small rotational exhibit. So what we're going to be doing is some of our program animals that aren't on exhibit, some, especially our larger lizards and our larger snakes, they're going to, um, on certain days, we're, we're going to have a kind of a rotation of what animals are out here. So okay. you'll get to so see sort of like a, a reptile bit. exhibit. Basically, um, a seasonal reptile exhibit. Seasonal reptile exhibit. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is the area I know uh, since uh, <laughs> since the temperatures have gone up and you're back to doing live programs out here. When the temperature goes down, of course, and during winter we do the programs in the answer yes. center. But then you're doing what three and four a day now. Yes. So um, Monday through Thursday, we have three programs a day at 1.30, 3.30, and 5. And then on Friday and Saturday, we have an 11.30, a 1.30, a 3.30, and a 5 o'clock program um, here at the Animal Actors And these stage. are very popular. Yes. People pack in here. Yes. And you get up on stage. What sort of animals do you have up there on stage? It's called our Animal <laughs> Actors stage. So um, we have our ambassador animal collection has grown quite a bit. Um, so we have a variety of snakes, um, lizards, we also have a couple birds. Um, our Eurasian eagle owl um, appears in our shows here. Um, we're hoping to get our Vonderdecken hornbill um, flying on the stage. We're still working on that, but we're hoping to debut her sometime this summer. And then we have some mammals that have come on stage. Um, my favorites um, are, we have a red kangaroo and a Bennett's wallaby that are harness trained, and they also, they come out on stage. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, and you know, I've seen a trained pig. Yes, and our pigs, we have pigs that come out and, and do shows as well. So. so there you are. So make sure you come and visit the Ark Encounter and you'll get to see the Binturong and the porcupines and all the other animals that are here. The rest of the, mm -hmm. the zoo goes back up towards the Ark there and then around the corner down here. And then we're also adding uh, a savanna area yes. over the back there. Uh, they're working on that right now. And then we have the camel rides over here. Uh, so this is really getting fantastic, isn't it? Yes. We're, we're going from a small zoo to a big zoo very quickly. <laughs> so that is really great. Okay, well, thanks, Leanne. Thanks for showing us uh, some of the new exhibits here. We continue to add exhibits and expand. Come visit us here at the Ark Encounter and also the Creation Museum. We have a number of animals. What sort of animals do we have at the Creation Museum? And they do live programs up there each day too yes. in Legacy Hall. Yes, we do live programs at the Creation Museum in Legacy Hall. Um, and this summer on Saturdays, we're actually going to have um, two shows that feature some of our animals from the Ark Encounter at the Creation Museum. Um, so we're really excited to be able to kind of share animals a little bit between the facilities. Right now at the Creation Museum, um, we've got goats and alpacas, um, we've got our white nose coatis, uh, Bennett's wallaby. Um, we also have some pigs that are hopefully going to be making their debut at the Creation Museum soon as well. So lots of fun animals there. And we, and we have a special uh, guest who comes and does Snakes Alive yes. programs. Yes. 
So Rick will actually, Rick Teepin, who does our Snakes Alive program, um, starting in June, um, he will be down here on Saturdays um, at our Animal Actor stage. So he'll be doing the 11.30, 1.30, and 3.30 shows. And then he also does shows at the Creation he Museum, too. He does shows at the Creation Museum, too. So. so there we are. So come and visit both attractions as soon as you're able to. And then keep coming back, because we keep adding programs, we keep adding attractions, keep adding animals. Yes. Uh, so. Tremendous place to come and visit, bring your family, God-honoring, family-friendly, Christian facilities where you don't have to worry about what they're going to hear or see. Uh, and it, it's, it's all to honor the Lord and teach people the truth of God's word and the gospel. So you all have a blessed day.